well, I think this will probably be close to the end here, but um, what are your thoughts about people going into courts and watching what takes place? They you know, need to. In, in the state of Texas, we have what's called the open courts doctrine. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we should be able to be free to go in and see what's taking place because these are people that have been elected. And in our Con Texas state constitution, it says that the courts shall remain open. So when I look at that, I think that that's a responsibility that we have to make sure that our courts are being operated in a fair and just way. And evidently, up in Collin County, some judges know me by name. They do, by sight. <laughs> By head, by sight. But, and mean, if they see a if they see a litigant that is in their courtroom talking to you, or in your presence, or in the vicinity of you, they want to know what your association with you is. <laughs> Can you talk about that with your own your own personal experience with that, well, or is that something you don't want to talk about? No, right that's now? fine. I can discuss. You don't it. have to discuss it. Yeah. Well, the bailiff, and because there is a concern about you, <laughs> um, the bailiff had several inquiries on what my relationship with you and how my association with you on you being at three of the court hearings that happened to be the same time my court hearings were <laughs> happening. So yeah. Yeah, but anyway, you know, the only reason I got involved with some of this stuff is because when I went through this stuff, I said there was nobody there to support me, not a person. And I mean, you're, you're so beaten up, you have to heal yourself. And what I talked about with some people, I said, I need to get myself healed, but my intent is to change the system, to change the laws. And, um, and then I started hearing from other people and I thought, you know, can it really be as bad? Is this is this normal course of things? But I found out everything that I went through minor. You know, it's just like not even newsworthy in a sense. Um, so I, when when people would tell me and say, hey, if you get an opportunity, this might be something you're interested in. And I've got enough flexibility at times at work that I can do that. So, um, and like I said, I was going up for somebody else, and and one of the guys from the Father's Rights Group said, go up there and meet Betty and sit in on her hearing. So uh, again, I mean, my hats off to the people in the Father's Rights Group. The stigmatism that they have sometimes, the stigma that like they're just angry men. They're no, not. They, they not were, at they all. Were, they were there defending you. Yes. And uh, yeah, there's a network because I know both of the individuals are protecting you, but they're we're also texting some of the other people that yeah. have gotten to know me over the last four years. Yeah. So yeah. it's a big network of both yeah. men and women. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but primarily men because yeah. they've been doing this a long time and especially men in uniform, they get stationed everywhere and they get royally messed up in their divorce. I'm glad you said that. I was men in uniform really have it that. Yeah. The uh, mm -hmm. and, and here are the people that we call our heroes, our military veterans. Mm -hmm. Um, and they come back and they are immediately assumed guilty. Well, they've been on deployment, but they're still immediately assumed guilty. Yeah. And uh, it's just horrid, yeah. horrid what takes place. The, the thing that I think bothers me the most, maybe not the most, but the thing that bothers me a lot is that um, also today I went to Rockwell and I went to go see Judge Brett Hall of the 382nd, I think it is. Uh, and I know the reason I wanted to see Judge Brett Hall was because last September I called him out on something and, and caused a big commotion in the Rockwell GOP breakfast. They threatened to have me arrested and for trespassing. And Judge Hall actually wanted to talk to me. He said, a right to be mad. He wanted to hear me. So I went in today. I was out there for my dental appointment. I said, okay, left him my phone number. Judge Brett Hall, you have my phone number. I hope you do call me. Um, because I would love to talk with you about these things that take place in your court. But the judges defend what they do. They have certain things that say, well, we can't relitigate a case. Well, they ne never, litigate, never litigate it to begin with. And then they say, well, we try to do a fair and just division. Well, why should anything be divided when I did nothing wrong? You are taking my property, you are taking my kids, and you're dividing things up. This is horrid. And I hope that Judge Brett Hall will actually talk with me. I would love to have a man-to-man -man talk with him. Um, I think what, they, what these judges do in everyday practice is horrid. And, uh, you know, our work is to try to fix the system, um, to make things right, because as we let the system go, What's happening is trauma is also being inflicted upon our kids. Oh, yes. And you talked about your kids. Yes. You know, you have kids that love you, and then uh, I'm sure that, you know, kids should have 
love for both parents. Yes, I agree with that. But they are caught in a turmoil. Yes. And sometimes the way, the easiest way to resolve that turmoil on behalf of the kids, you feel like you've either got to walk away if you fight. They know that you're fighting for them, but if they, but if you fight, then they say you're being angry. Mm -hmm. But if you walk away, they're like, well, they don't care. Mm -hmm. And I think you've talked a little bit about that struggle that you yeah. have. The kids would feel abandoned. Yeah. I know that they would. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I sincerely believe, although a lot of the high conflict divorces, the children end up siding with one parent because they have the emotional need to side with one parent because that parent decides that because their personality disorder or whatever <laughs> mental mental state that they have to take everything away from you and the best way to hurt you is your, the children that you share with them. Um, so they do anything possible um, and the children are forced to pick a side and that's with the parent that decides to go down that route. Um, it causes a lot of emotional harm. They still love you as a parent. That I believe wholeheartedly. They may not ever be able to express it to you. They may, you know, tell you that they hate you, that they don't love you, but in their heart of hearts, they do love you. And I just can't walk away from my children. Um, a lot of people tell me, why don't I just give up? Why don't my children will return to me once they turn 18? That's not the case. I, That's not the case. That's no. not the case. Yeah. I, everybody gets that, not should say everybody, a lot of people get that advice or even give that advice. Yeah. And it's the worst thing you can tell somebody. Yeah. So, so have you felt like you've been alienated from your children at all? Oh, I am. When they're in his possession, he does <laughs> not allow them to answer the phone or answer my text. So they'll go a solid week without talking to me. Um, I still attempt to call them. Um, every night I make one phone call and out, if they don't answer, which majority of time they don't, um, I will send one text and I'll just say good night. I said just call, just wanted to wish you good night. Um, and then I just say when I'm gonna see him next. Um, sometimes I just make it two short sentences most of the time. Yeah, you're a much better person than that than I am. I, there's the part that I mean it's Anyway, um, but the one thing about the alienation part, uh, Dr. Stephen Miller, great guy. Um, yes, I've heard him talk on conference calls, yes. international phone calls. Were you on the one recently, like within the last couple of months? No, I was on the call he did um, in 2018, yeah. around December, during the holidays. Okay. Because um, Elaine... Elaine Johnson Cobb, yeah. Yeah, she, she arranged, the, arranged the phone call. Yeah, and she did, this was another one that she did. That was mm -hmm. January this year, and then they replayed it, I think, mm -hmm. in April. Yeah. So I was able to take full notes mm -hmm. between the two calls. But, um, you know, one of the things he says is that parental alienation is completely counterintuitive. So if a judge is there thinking that I'm going to be able to figure this out, this is high conflict, you'll get it wrong 100% of the time. If you have no specialized training, you will get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Judges think that they have it right and they get it wrong and they end up re-victimizing the victim mm -hmm. and empowering the alienator. Yeah. One final question here. You said you're a person of faith. You believe in God and everything. Yes, I do. You, you go to a church right now then? Um, on and off because okay. I feel alone if I go by myself. So yeah, I, I have you. friends that take me. So as far as the church itself, do you think the church understands a lot of these issues? Do you think the church, um, has failed in a lot of these issues? Do you think the church just needs to be educated? Because I have seen the churches, um, and I've thought to myself, the churches have been, to some degree, awful. Well, they've provided just, I guess, an understanding about what I'm going through and just to lean on God. Um, they're not, you know, they're not getting in the middle of it, but spiritually, they provide faith and hope and just to lean on God right. and just to always not lose your faith. That is true, yeah. So that's where I lean on. I haven't asked them for any type of other help, Yeah. Um, but I've met with pastors yeah. and they prayed over me um, and what they kept was my spirit up. Yeah. So I cannot, although I've been through the four years of hell, um, I can legitimately say that I've never experienced a true depression because I had friends that were willing to talk to me on the phone even though they couldn't support me in other ways. They could listen to me. Um, I never felt truly, truly alone yeah. because I knew God's presence was with me. Um, yeah. And I was reminded of that continually because I did see miracles happen 
every now and then yeah. that would keep me going. So, and I guess let me take this a little bit further there, because some of those things that you're saying, I understand what you're saying with that. But um, there is a song that was out, it says, We Are His Body. You know, basically, we're the, the hands and the feet of Jesus. And that's where I think the church is locked. You go to the church and you ask them for help, and they will pray, but they won't get involved. No. They don't want to take sides. No, they don't get involved in that aspect, no. And that's why I say the church is failing, because there are some things they should say to, whether it's the, the, the father or the mother, you guys are well my, my ex-husband yeah. proclaims that he's agnostic so he's never right. been to the church yeah yeah but in a situation yeah I, I hear what you're saying but there and, and you're right that that creates a different dynamic but I've seen people that have gone to a same church and something happens and the church does nothing mm -hmm. and then of course one of the spouses has to leave the church or whatever mm -hmm. and you know elders pastors who know the entire thing is wrong but they're afraid to stand up mm -hmm. they have no spine in this matter because I think to me, to me when you look at the Christian perspective of marriage it should be one man one woman for one mm -hmm. lifetime I understand there are reasons at times that people divorce or need yeah. to divorce or it's acceptable um, but at the same time it's far too easy and the destruction even when it's necessary it's still tragic for the children in many respects and uh, and I think that in many respects the church has failed in those areas um, they want to be the heroes later on but get your hands dirty mm -hmm. and, and stop the thing from happening yeah. again but anyway, listen, I don't want to take any much oh, more of your yeah. time, but thank, thank you. you so much. Appreciate thank you, you spending the time here. And Betty, um, let me know if you ever need anything again. I'm, I'm so glad that you, yeah. that you met with me. And, oh, anyway. I'm glad to meet you. Yeah, so thanks again so much. Well, Appreciate thank everything. Thanks. Thank you.